everyone. It's Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. I hope everyone had a lovely weekend. We actually had quite a bit of rain here in Texas, but we really, really needed it. But it's making me feel ready for fall, y'all. I'm so ready to put out the pumpkins and put out the home fall decor. I don't know about you, but I'm over summer. So I'm probably gonna start decorating my home in the next week or two. So all of my Patreon members, you will see some home decorating and home organization videos coming up in the next couple of weeks. I do have a very scary paranormal story that is now available on my Patreon account. So if you don't know, I do have a Patreon membership that is available for $3 a month, where I'm going to share one to two videos a week that are not on YouTube. So if you are interested in joining guys, the link is down below. For the rest of my RDT family, don't worry, your girl's going to be here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday delivering brand new Royal Daily Tea content. And today we have a lot of juicy tea to get into. So sit back and relax, grab yourself a beverage, and let's get into the Royal Daily Tea. Prince Charles has launched a brand new fragrance inspired by his beloved gardens at High Grove House. Now we know that Prince Charles is an avid gardener. He's been gardening since he was a child and he has spent a lot of time developing his gardens at High Grove House for the past 40 years. Now the Royal has teamed up with the company Penn Halligan to launch a brand new perfume that is inspired by his beloved gardens at High Grove House. Now according to the website, High Grove Bouquet is a new scent inspired by and created with His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales in part as a tribute to his magnificently fragrant summers at High Grove Gardens. They said, quote, it is a time when the ardor of blossoming, weeping silver lime fills the air and High Grove Gardens is full of its branches with their blooming, uplifting floral notes. A crisp, confident burst of warm energy opens the dance with vibrant lavender and geranium. As floral powdery notes appear, a shroud of delicate yellow blossoms seem to fill the air and to the mimosa tuberose brings longevity and depth, a solar storm of rich delight. The restful and soothing base is a blend of elegance and sophistication from cedar woods and orris. Sounds lovely. The scent has top notes of geranium, lavender, and hyacinthus, rounded out by weeping lime, tuberose, cedar wood, Oris Fusion and Musks. Now the bottle of perfume cost around $180 with 10% of proceeds benefiting the Princess Foundation, the Royal Heirs charity that offers a diverse range of education and training programs for all ages and backgrounds from traditional arts, craft skills to architecture and design, science, engineering, horticulture and hospitality. Prince Charles had worked diligently on Highgrove House's gardens for four decades, which he designed to please the eye and sit in harmony with nature. Since the early 1980s, Charles has regularly invited groups, schools, and charities to tour the gardens. He said, quote, one of my greatest joys is to see the pleasure that the garden can bring to many of the visitors and that everybody seems to find some part of it that is special to them. So I think it's fascinating that he has a brand new perfume. Let me know if you plan to buy this perfume. $180 is a little steep for me, so maybe I'll have to add this to my Christmas wish list. And maybe if I'm a really good girl, Santa will buy me this perfume. So calling all professional seat fillers, your services are needed on September 5th when Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, gives her opening keynote speech to the One Young World Summit on September 5th. That's right, folks. Meghan and Harry are scrambling to make sure there are major butts in those seats because they're bringing along their Netflix crew to document this moment. Now, they're trying to act like Harry and Meghan are there out of the goodness of their hearts. They're doing it for charity and not publicity. I mean, come on, folks. Let's call a spade a spade. We all know what's happening. 
Harry and Meghan are flying next month to the UK to visit, quote, charities that are close to their heart, where both Harry and Meghan will be delivering some speeches and awards. Now, look, we all know this is for their Netflix docu-series that the two are scrambling to get butts in seats and to make sure it's entertaining and interesting and that they get some really good footage for their Netflix docu-series. You know that docu-series, which was the worst kept lie and secret in the universe, right behind Kylie Kardashian's pregnancy that we all knew she was pregnant. Again, these two think that we're idiots. We're not drinking the Sussex Kool-Aid. As a matter of fact, either is the Sussex squad. They're disappearing, poof, in midair. Everyone is being radio silent. It is like crickets over there in Sussexville. People are deleting a Sussex squad member from their profile. Accounts are getting deactivated and it's going nuclear quiet. In my personal opinion, there's major problems going on in the Sussex camp right now. We all know that the Spotify deal with Megan is hanging on by a bare thread. I mean, they have pumpkins and Christmas trees in the Department stores. We're approaching fall. Where is Megan's podcast? Anyone? Does anyone see it? Is it ASMR? Is that why we don't hear it? Because it's so silent? What the hell is going on with Archetype, Megan? Not to mention they've already canceled Pearl. Nobody has a clue what is happening with the Heart of Invictus. It's been five months. The show has yet to air on Netflix. And now they're going over to the UK to get some much needed footage for that on the wall docu-series, the one they pretended was not happening. Now look, we all know when Harry spoke at the UN, it was an embarrassment to them because it was an empty auditorium. It was off season. But again, they keep thinking that they're legends in their own mind, that they have Diana magic and that people are interested in them and what they have to say. The problem is we're not. You're not working royals. You're barely Mr. and Mrs. Windsor of Montecito, again, running around with royal titles. The problem is you're doing these fake royal tours in a country that doesn't recognize you as a royal. Your own country doesn't recognize you as a royal, so why would we recognize you as a royal? So again, they are desperately trying to get that footage for Netflix, and we all know Megzi is not going to have the same turnout that Prince Harry did because she is going to make sure that Sunshine Sacks gets some major butts in those seats. It is going to be a packed house, mark my words, probably with a standing ovation and some cheers for Princess Meghan because Sunshine Sacks is going to make sure it happens, and when they go and film for Netflix, Netflix, they're going to have all those adoring fans on the street cheering Harry and Meghan. But we all know they have to hire people to do it because if you've ever seen them on their little recent tours, it's not a lot of people. They do not attract the people that William and Catherine do. That is the truth. I don't care what you say. It is 100% the truth. Harry and Meghan are the Instagram version of royals. It's not real. It's all smoke and mirrors. So the rumor on the street is they might be hiring one of those services where people go and they're professional seat fillers. Hollywood uses these types of people for award shows because you will never, ever, ever see an empty seat seat at the Oscars, the Emmys, the Grammys. So when you pan around the camera, it is always full of people. So if someone is by themselves, there's going to be a seat filler in that seat. So in my personal opinion, and according to a rumor on the street, they've already put out feelers from some of these companies. They're going to hire some well-dressed people to come and get themselves in those seats. It's going to be a packed house when Meghan Markle stands up there and gives her keynote speech because Megan is not going to let them do to her what they did to Harry. Again, she's kind of setting him up for failure. 
She's making him look like the loser, the person that no one cares about, and that she's Princess Megan. She is the popular one out of this duo. Again, Sunshine Sachs is definitely working for Megan. They're not doing a whole heck of a lot for poor little Harry. Harry's just signing his name to the check. Son, you better get someone on that team to start working on your PR because it's not looking great for you. Megan is making a fool out of you, son. That's my opinion. But mark my words, it's going to be a standing ovation, crowds of people. They're going to be paid to be there, but we're not going to know the difference because they're not going to tell people that they're seat fillers. But uh, there was a rumor, there was an ad in the paper, everybody looking for people on those dates to be seat fillers. Again, Megan is not going to go down with the ship and she's not going to be embarrassed the way that Harry was embarrassed at the UN. Again, they're trying to act like they have the Diana magic, but they don't. And it's very clear people are no longer drinking the Sussex Kool-Aid. Many people who are part of the Sussex squad have removed it from their bios. They've been radio silent. They've had accounts deactivated. Maybe the checks aren't going through. You know, maybe they're no longer getting paid and they decided, hey, I'm not advertising for free. Something weird's going on there, guys, behind the scenes of the Sussex Squad and the fans of Princess Meghan and Prince Harry. But it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when they go over to the UK for their mini fake royal tour. That's for Netflix. But in my personal opinion, the only reason why Netflix even signed these two to that multi-million dollar deal was for this reality show. Everything else, Pearl, Heart of Invictus, was just fluff. They were meant to distract us from the cameras. We all knew they were filming a reality show. It is, again, the worst kept secret. We all knew it for two years. They finally just acknowledged it this past year. But again, in my personal opinion, they really, really need this show to be a success. Or Netflix could possibly be dumping them along with Spotify. I guess we'll all have to wait and see. So another story has come out that Harry and Meghan could possibly send their children, Lily Bitt and Archie, for a UK education. Uh, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry may choose to provide their children with an education outside of the U.S. Now, I personally believe that because even though Harry and Meghan have said they've left the royal family to go off and find financial freedom in the spring of 2020, we all know that Harry has not fully left the royal family. They named their daughter Lilibet after his grandmother. They showed up for the Platinum Jubilee, trying to be a part of the royal family, although it was extremely awkward. They still have a house in Frogmore Cottage. In my opinion, when they initially did Megxit, they never fully wanted to step away as royals. They wanted to do the half in and half out. They wanted to split their time between the UK and the United States. When Harry and Meghan sat down with Oprah Winfrey, Meghan talked about how titles weren't important to her. Well, we all know that's not true because she wanted Archie to be born a prince automatically. She didn't realize the ruling and how things worked. She really wants Lilibet and Archie to have all the trappings and the pomp and circumstance of being royals. She calls herself the Duchess of Sussex or Princess Meghan, as her fans call her. Meghan very much likes being a duchess. She loves that title. She loves the fact her husband is a royal prince, and they have all of the privileges and the perks. They just don't want to follow any of the rules. They wanted to do royal life the way they wanted to do royal life, and we all know you can't do that. So in my opinion, Harry and Meghan, even though they bash the royal family, they have not cut ties with being royals. They're hypocrites when it comes to being royals. They try to set up an alternative royal family in Montecito. They walk around acting like we have Diana Magic. Look at us. We're Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex. Again, these two reek of privilege. They don't know how to be normal citizens, and Prince Harry has only been a, quote, civilian for about two and a half years. He has been HRH Prince Harry his entire life, up until 2020. Again, he hasn't relinquished any of his titles 
or his pomp and circumstance. They're fighting with the home office. They're suing the home office with two lawsuits to get their security back from the Metropolitan Police. Well, why would they be fighting so hard for their security if they wanted to walk away from royal life? These people are fighting to stay in with the royals. So sending their children, Archie and Lilibet, to the UK schools, the same way that Harry went to school there, the same way that the Cambridges are sending their children. In my opinion, Harry wanted to have that royal baptism for Lilibet. They wanted to have the picture with the queen. Harry and Meghan very much want to be with the royals. They just want to be able to do their own thing and not follow rules. The problem is you can't do that. Now back in 2020 when they initially stepped away from the royal family, if you listen to the words that Harry actually said, it's going to prove to you that he never fully intended to leave his royal life behind. He said, quote, we now plan to balance our time between the United Kingdom and North America, continuing to honor our duty to the Queen, the Commonwealth, and our patronages. Again, he thought the Queen was going to let him do that, but she said no. He said the geographic balance will enable us to raise our son with an appreciation for the royal tradition in which he was born, while also providing our family with the space to focus on the next chapter, including the launch of our new charitable entity. So again, when he initially stepped away, he had the impression that he was going to be spending half his time in the UK, half his time in America, and they would be half in and half out of the royal family. Well, the Queen cut them off completely, and it pretty much put them into a shock that they took away the security. Remember that infamous thing where he's like, um, my daddy cut me off financially because they told him, look, son, you want to go off and be a man and be your own and support your family? We 100% support you, but we're not going to pay for you. You're not going to have security. You're not, your son's not going to get the prince title, but, you know, go off and, and live your life. And Harry did not want that. So when they sat on the Oprah Winfrey interview, he, he pitched a fit and they said a lot of horrific things in anger. Now, in my personal opinion, they definitely regret that interview because now They've definitely alienated themselves from the royals. You know, two people who are so jealous of Kate and William and the other working royals, they're constantly trying to outshine them. But people are starting to see them as ex-royals, people with no relevance or importance. You're literally the ex-royals in America. America, the land that doesn't recognize titles, especially for people who are not currently active members of the royal family who represent the queen and the crown. So again, it makes them look a little silly over here acting like we're royals to a bunch of Americans. Again, you're in the wrong country, son. Read the room. I personally can see them sending their children to the UK because they are so jealous of the Cambridges and the Cambridges children. It was very evident during the Platinum Jubilee when everyone fell in love with George and Charlotte and Prince Louis and how they acted during the Platinum Jubilee that when they came back to the States, what did they do? They released the first birthday photo of Lilibet to the public. Why? Why did we need to see a photo of your daughter? You guys want to be private. You want to keep your children to yourselves. We didn't need to have that photo of Lilibet, but they couldn't stand it. Megan couldn't stand that people weren't gushing over her children. You know why? Because we don't know their children. They don't share their children with people. The people of the UK don't know Archie. They don't know Lilibet. They don't have a relationship with your children because you keep them from people, which is your right to do. So don't get mad when people don't fawn over them. Bonding over the picture in the back of Archie's head, I'm sorry, it looked like one of those things you buy in a frame. Just don't even bother at that point. Keep them to yourself. We don't need to see them. 
But again, in my opinion, Megan was pissed. Megan was trying to steal the thunder away from Her Majesty the Queen and the Cambridge children. She couldn't stand it. So she sent the photo of Lilibet and wanted people to fall all over themselves with the photo of her daughter, who is adorable. But the point is, it's just strange how she uses her children to manipulate the public and, of course, for a dollar bill. It's all for the money. So in my opinion, I can see them sending their kids there because they want their kids to kind of be like the Cambridges, which in a way it's really sad because Archie and Lilibet are missing out on their birthright. They're missing out on getting to know their family from both sides and their cousins. Now we know during the interview with the Today Show host, Hody Copte, he talked about how Montecito was his home now and America had opened him with open arms and he was very happy to be there. In my personal opinion, Harry still has a foot in the UK. He has a get out of jail card. He hasn't quite closed the door completely on his family because again, he's only been a civilian out of the royal life for two and a half years and he's still using his titles. They're still using their connection to the royals to make money. But in my opinion, they're having a lot of problems right now with Netflix and with Spotify. And I haven't heard of them signing any other deals. So if they lose Netflix and Spotify, I think their star power is totally going to tank. We are heading into a recession. These big companies can't afford to sign quasi celebrities who don't produce the goods to these hundred million dollar contracts. Now we know we have Harry's book coming out in the fall, but he has a lot of competition with Valentine Lowe, Tom Bauer. There's more and more royal books, Michelle Obama. Too many people are coming out around the same time and Harry doesn't have the huge fan base that he once had. So these Sussexes, in my opinion, are finding a little bit of a crisis. They're having to hire people to be butt fillers at Meghan's event because Harry just spoke to an empty room. People aren't drinking the Kool-Aid. Even the Sussex squad members are reducing that from their bios. Even the Sussex squad is being radio silent. So I think there's a lot of problems right now with the Sussexes, with their deals. So I can definitely see them wanting to go back to the UK and they can use the excuse, well, we want Archie and Lilibet to grow up in the UK. I personally think they're going to hold on to Daddy and pray that he's there to support them when all of their deals go belly up. That's all I have for you today. Let me know your thoughts. Do you plan to purchase Prince Charles' brand new perfume? What do you think about Harry and Meghan having to hire seat fillers for Meghan's speech? And do you believe Harry and Meghan will educate their children in the UK? Please leave me your comments down below. As always, I appreciate you being here. If you'd like to support me, please consider becoming a Patreon member of my channel. I do have a Patreon membership that's only $3 a month. There you will receive exclusive one to two videos per week. That is going to be a mix of story time videos, recipes, home decor, home organization, recipes, and more. It's going to be a very fun, exclusive community. We will do monthly lives as well as monthly giveaways. So if you would like to join the membership, the link will be down below. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Please be sure to check out all of my social media accounts, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.